Hello and welcome back to the Weird Booze Weekend. I'm your co-host Derek Belkin. Drinking with me on this drunken adventure is my other co-host, Mr. Hi, I'm David Kuhn. I'm really excited about this episode. And we have as our special guest, Mr. Elliot Fox, founder of the Weird Booze Weekend. Mm-hmm. You yeah. make it sound like it was lost. Yeah. <laughs> I found this thing. It was for like eight years. <laughs> And then we found it, revived it. We found it. it again. We found it again and we brought it back. So, so yeah, what are we drinking? Dave found this, and Elliot, you asked to be on this episode. Today yes. we're drinking Untabak. Untabak. So, Wait, it is a D. I thought it was a T. So, here's the thing, and so this here technically does not get to be classified as an alcohol. Yeah, that's right. I actually found this uh, online, just on Amazon. Um, uh, it's classified as a what bitters, right? Yeah, which is a food stuff in New York State. Yeah. Yes, despite the fact of it being forty-four percent alcohol by volume. Yes, yes, forty-four percent alcohol by volume. We're gonna get fucked up on tiny bottles. Yeah, yeah. The thing so, is, uh, it, it is uh, so it's uh, twenty milliliters, which is uh, they have this. It's six point six seven fluid ounces. Yes, you're not. You know, it's not. You're not gonna feel this really. Hold on. Before we get into ripping off this paper, Uh a brief history. Yes. So, 1846, um, the founder of Unterberg finally created what he wanted to create. Apparently, he spent years trying to figure out a good digestive. And the thing is that the recipe has not been changed since then. Super uh, Super idiom, which means the same or all the same, is kind of the process. What they do is they make it. The what goes exactly in it is unknown because they safeguard the recipe. It is secret herbs and spices. However, you'll get flavors of apparently aniseed, very bitter, very herbal. We're gonna see what happens with this. The big thing is after it's done distilling, they put in some uh, Slovenian oak chests or casks or barrels. Let it age for a few years, and then you end up with this tiny little bottle. Well, gentlemen, first let's rip off this paper. I already started. Like a child on Christmas morning, I couldn't wait. Ah. It is a very good feeling. So they, they say, do, it says right on here, after a good meal. So uh, hopefully. I had some combos yeah. in the car on the drive out. That's yeah, a good meal. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. Spicy honey mustard. Oh, Open up we, this tiny bottle and how are we toasting? Well, in German, it's Prost. Prost. Yes, gentlemen, Prost. 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 I like that they're glass. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, like that is delicious. I forgot. It reminds me of something. I don't know what. I'll tell you exactly what the first. Ooh. The first little whiff of flavor on my palate reminded me of what mm-hmm. Chinese five spice. I don't even know what that is. Chinese five spice. It's a oh, it's a oh, it's a oh. spice blend that's used in a lot of Chinese cooking. Yeah, okay. And yeah. it's got star anise, clove, um, I believe, galangal. I'm tasting that clove incidentally. Yeah, that is, cinnamon that and licorice root. I think is what goes into five spice. Don't quote me on that though. I'm so, getting. A menagerie of flavors. Oh yeah, no, the clove comes in really strong. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Well, I'm getting. Mint? Yeah. Some oh, cinnamon? Oh, yeah. Wow. It's like a potent little thing. <laughs> like, this will ease your stomach ache, I feel like. Like, this is. Or give you one. I know. Yeah. Sometimes, yes. Ooh, some ginger, too, now. Yeah. I I, like that. like I said, it's, it's reminding me a lot of Five Spice. Like, damn. D- don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, like, start pounding these bottles. That's not going to happen. But I'm impressed. Like, if at the very least, I want to see this actually put into something and cooked with it. Well, and the idea, oh, yeah. the idea is that you are supposed to have one to two of these after a hefty meal, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah but if you like, like, took some chicken breast and like soaked it in that for a good long time, put it on the grill. Yeah, I could totally see that. Yeah. You have to do something to counter the bitter, though, because that's going to get amplified. The grill. Yeah. Yeah. A little honey. Make a glaze out of this with some honey. <laughs> Put that on your meat. Gentlemen. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing where this goes. I We found something that's 
And technically, it's not a booze. I mean, it's a booze. It's, it's a booze. It's a medicine. <laughs> That's it's a medicine for your stomach. All medicine is alcohol, and all alcohol is medicine. But gentlemen, let's start making some cocktails. Hell yeah! First one I found this on their website. It is apparently one of the recommended drinks with these tiny bottles. Okay, so this is how you make a Crowther sour. First, shaker with some ice. Then you're going to do two ounces of Dolan Blanc Vermouth. So we're going to get that into the shaker. Guzzle, guzzle, guzzle. One. Guzzle, 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 guzzle. Two. Then you go take one of the tiniest bottles of Unterberg. Rip it open in the most fearsome way. Put that drain in there. It's trying to drain. Come on, little buddy, you got it. There you go. Then, three quarters ounce, simple syrup. Three quarters ounce. That's about it. Oh, yeah, it's cold. Then, three quarters ounce of lemon juice. We freshly squeezed ours earlier. Three quarters ounce. And because it's a shaker, we shake. Strain into a fancy coupe glass. And then garnish whoop, with a lemon peel. There you have it. Und Krauter Sour. It's, if you smell, you still smell the Unterberg very forward, yep. but I'm also getting the lemon juice. I, I'm predicting this is going to be excellent. Like, having had the Unterberg, like, I can totally see it. Like, And then shit. this is rounded out with vermouth? With a uh, Dolan Blanc vermouth. Okay. Oh, yeah, which is a sweeter vermouth. So it's like a, yeah, it's a red, uh, sorry, it's a white vermouth, but it's not a dry vermouth. It's sweet. Yeah. It's an interesting one. Um, if you haven't had a, a Blanc vermouth, um, they're really good. And then, of course, it's got some um, simple syrup in there, too, sweeten it up. Okay. Mm. So, gentlemen, Prost. 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 That's huh. nice. That's Christmassy. That is exactly. What yes. I that's real Christmassy. I'm getting a lot more oh. of the clove and the spice in there. And by spice, I don't mean heat. I mean like the cinnamon. Oh yeah, that they, that clove taste that, that kind of lingers on your tongue afterwards. Am I nuts to say that this would be delicious as a toddy if you serve this warm? You are not nuts. You're, You're not nuts. nuts. No, I agree with you. Yeah. This is this is bizarre. No, slightly less sweet, but. Still, honey instead of simple syrup. Yes, that's what you do. Yeah, like, I mean this is good, but I want it warm. I want, uh, yeah. Mm. This is weird because, again, the bottle wasn't bad. The bottle was Bottle's different. Excellent. I'm not gonna say excellent, <laughs> but it's different. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I'm glad you came on. That was great. I mean, I mean, here's 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 what I'm imagining for this. Mm. Is, is, you know, we mix this up the same way we would and then slowly bring it to a light simmer in a pan on the stove. I pour it into a mug with like a stick of cinnamon and like mm. maybe a little star anis floating on top. Oh, yeah, yeah. I put my feet up on the bare rug that I have in my cabin in the Black Forest. That's true. You do. And I sit down to read a good volume of German opera <laughs> while I sip my hot toddy kraut of sour I don't and eat a plate of sauerkraut. Hmm? I don't know if you can read German opera that way. What? You don't know if I can, but I know I can. I don't know if it's a layered itself or if that's just the way the Unterberg is. Mm. Because when you taste the Unterberg, the initial, just the bottle, flavors were coming at you. That's what I get going now. Now yeah. I get something different. 
Well, and I think I think you could play around with this mm -hmm. recipe a lot with expanding out from simple syrup, going with flavored syrups, different botanical syrups, um, maple syrups. That might work. I don't, hmm. That might work, but I'm I'm thinking more. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Uh, uh, you put the unsugared in the maple syrup, and then you put that on the waffles. That sounds like a good time. I'm thinking this more along the lines with like instead of a simple syrup, an elderflower syrup of some kind. Ooh. Just adding, just adding another botanical note to it. I mean, it's really lovely the way it is. I think it's fine, but I think we do have elderflowers in the studio. Wait, what? We do have elderflower syrup in the studio. No, this is good by itself. It's, it is. We find Next time, like this, Dave. Oh. <laughs> but Dave, yeah. yeah, as I'm getting to the bottom of my drink, I think I want another. Yeah. So. um... So this is a this is a very sweet kind of like uh, uh, you know citrusy light refreshing drink. I wanted to take it in a little bit of a different direction, um, so I'm going to make an espresso martini with this. All right, an espresso martini calls for an aged rum. Um, you typically don't want to use a dark rum or a light rum. Dark rum might be okay, but you really want this aged like this kind of nice golden color. I'm going to do an ounce and a half of this. Um, we're going to do an ounce of, I've got espresso here. I've been chilling it. This is an ounce of espresso there. I'm going to kind of supplement the espresso flavor and add a little sweetness with um, a coffee liqueur. Uh, just a half ounce of this. Good. Um, now we're going to throw in our Unterberg, a uh, whole bottle of this. Let that shreds. Mm -hmm. There we go. And finally, we're just going to like do a splash, maybe like a quarter of an ounce, maybe a little less. Um, of just simple syrup, just to add a little bit more sweetness to this. Then we're going to shake it over ice. That should be good. And then we need to put it in a glass. I don't have a glass with me. Weird. Isn't this beautiful? Do you don't want to do that? You don't want the ice in there. Freaking beautiful. A nice foam on top. That's how you know you did it right. Dave, what have you made? I have made this beautiful drink. It is delightful. It is an espresso martini. Uh, it is... It smells like iced coffee. What, what, it does. Yeah. And I like that. It's, it's real coffee. And I don't like coffee. Yes. I do. I'm going to say, like, so with these kind of, like, like it's not like... And, anything special as far as the espresso goes. It's more about like all the mixers and this is going to be amazing. Is there I'd egg whiteness for the, for the froth or is that no, just shaking? No, that is just shaking. That's just shaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Believe it or not. Uh, uh, so Maybe I mean, you the coffee? Yeah, yeah. the, the coffee know. actually does that if you shake it up a bit. Uh, you can actually enough. notice um, in mine, since I made mine a little bit earlier than, than yours, um, it's actually subtle a bit, so it does kind of go off, but that's ice cream on it. So, uh, gentlemen, I just want to start drinking this. Yeah. Yeah. Roast. Roast. I don't know how I feel about this, but I also don't want to stop drinking it. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So, coffee by itself. Just black coffee is bitter, and the bitters are with that. 
But I feel like the coffee, like this of this espresso martini, is masking the Udenberg. I think okay. So I think if I was to make this again, um, I'd actually use a little bit less coffee liqueur and a little bit more simple syrup. Simple syrup, maybe a bit of cream. That's what I'm, so normally I drink my coffee black, and this is very reminiscent of a nice, herbaceous, you know, fanciful black coffee, you know, like a, like a light roast that's got a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the, the coffee bean notes forward into it. Um, not exactly a flavored coffee, but just maybe, maybe a particular roast. Um, and like, because it doesn't taste particularly alcoholic either. So this kind of feels like a nice iced coffee that I might grab from a barista on my way to an interview or something. But that would be a problem because this is a cocktail. Well, here's the thing. I'm not going to lie. I was feeling after the first drink. Yeah. I was feeling a little tipsy. Um, now I'm getting the bitterness from the Unterberg and the more I sip on this. It's a lovely taste, and I think I would like this over it's, ice. But I think, yeah, I think I, I, blend it, baby. Yeah, and, that'd be good. And when I'm when I'm drinking my coffee, I like it black. But mm -hmm. for coffee flavored cocktails, I tend mm -hmm. to like a little bit of cream going in. So I'm wondering if, like, maybe a little dash of um, some Bailey's uh, or or really some just other cream, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're getting, getting a lot of good cream. Just it? just some heavy, heavy cream for it. It needs yeah. something to bind it a little bit. Yeah. Heavy cream, Kahlua. Yeah. Something. Yeah. I'm no, always gonna overwhelm the coffee flavor. You don't want to You do a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I almost use Kahlua as the coffee liqueur. Gentlemen, hear me out. Okay, okay. You make the drink as is. You throw in a little bit of cream in there instead of the simple syrup. Okay. Mm -hmm. You shake. Instead of, instead of the simple syrup. Instead yes. of the simple syrup. Okay. Because the simple syrup ain't helping right now. I'm not getting any of the sweetness. Maybe just a sugar cube then melted into it. Give me my cream. Mm. You take some caramel drizzle. Mm. Put the glass with that. Shake. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pour okay. in. Or you blend it. Oh, well, we're getting like in. fancy barista style. Yeah, we're oh, yeah. We're going, we're going, okay. we're going, I'm going fancy, fancy uh, with this. Unterberg, yeah. you can pay me later by checks in the mail. I <laughs> it's it's yeah. nice, though. It's yeah. like, particularly if you are a fan of fanciful coffees mm -hmm. and don't like to get too crazy with your cafe order just a nice black coffee served over ice this is similar to that in flavor in a lot of ways yeah. and if that's what you like but you want a nice cocktail at the end of the day or in the middle of the day if you need a weird boozy pick me up <laughs> as long as it's the week so uh just like a little bit of about it. So I actually replaced uh, the recipe that I have for an espresso martini actually calls for Benedictine, which is mm. like a, uh, it's, it's like, it's just got a little hint of bitterness, but it is like a very sweet, but like light uh, little, little thing. Um, it's very, it's an herb liqueur. It, it, if, yeah, it's like a Jägermeister, but a little bit lighter. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, a Jägermeister? Lettermeister, yes. So, Elliot, I think you probably have uh, something to share with us. Well, per my assignment, whenever I'm brought in on this, without knowing what spirit tastes like, I'm just supposed to use my knowledge of obscure alcohols to invent a new cocktail, and I've created a very interesting flip with Unterberg that now having tasted it, I think is going to be quite nice. Okay, how are we making this then? What's so, your variation on the flip? So my variation on the flip, and I'm going to call this the Over Unter. Uh, this Over is going Unter. to be a Madeira-based uh, flip. We are using a rainwater, which is a very nice Madeira. I personally enjoy rainwater for sipping at home. Okay. Because I'm a sherry man and a Madeira man. I'm not a wine man, so let's go. Yeah. It's a fortified wine. It's got a higher alcohol content than most wines do because sherries and ports were invented to travel safely, uh, which creates a richer, more rounded flavor with higher sweet notes. Because we really want to, for this cocktail, counteract any of the bitter flavors of the Unterberg, but maintain all the flavor of the aromatics. So my cocktail is going to involve what all flips involve is at least a portion of egg. I'm going with just the egg yolk for mine. So while I have Derek assembling yes. the rest of the cocktail, I'm going to be very uh, methodically separating the yolk from the white in this egg right here to get the desired 
egg yolk that I need. Okay, so while I form the over um over under over under over under Voltron here, what am I doing, Elliot? So what I want you to assemble in that shaker glass there, um, which I already have some ice in. I want you to put in three ounces of the Madeira. I'll go put it in this one. Three ounces of Madeira. And we are going with the classic means of separating an egg yolk from the egg white, which is just pouring it back and forth between two halves of the shell here. <laughs> Methodically. Two. And painstakingly. Three. Separating that. In this situation, it doesn't actually matter if my egg yolk breaks because that egg yolk is going to get broken up in the cocktail. All right, now I want you to put in a half ounce of simple syrup. Simple syrup, half ounce. Oh, half other side. Ounce. The other side. Got this nice little bit of egg membrane here that's not wanting to quite separate. There we there go. There we go. No, oh, almost. No, it's like snot. It, it is quite a bit like snot. There we go. There we go. There okay, we go. Fox. All right. And then next, I would like you to take an entire bottle of the Unterberg. Uh, bottle of Unterberg. Uh, ah, we got a second bottle. We here. do have a second box of them right here. Right. Twist off that top, pour that down into the cocktail shaker. Whole bottle. Whole bottle. I got to do it at an angle. You got to do it so at an angle. So the air go through. The, 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 the opening is so tiny that uh, we have to uh, separate it in such a way. I will get into uh, the tiniest bar fights. <laughs> and then the last ingredient that's going into the shaker yes. is going to be just a dash of brandy. We've picked some VSOP Cavassier here. Quite nice. So just throw a little splash in there. Tell me when to stop. There. Oh my goodness. It went everywhere. <laughs> that should be enough. Mm. And now I've thoroughly separated the white from the yolk here. And we're going to throw that egg yolk Boop. right into the shaker glass. If you would be so kind as to get rid of these shells for me. My it's hands are sticky with egg yolk. Do you want me to shake or you shake? Well, give me a paper towel and I'll... We're not shaking this. I'm going to shake. Oh. We're not shaking this. So are we doing? We're it's not shaking because I don't want to agitate it too much. Yeah, but what we are doing okay. with a flip, for a yolk only flip, what I would like to do is just pour back and forth gently, letting that ice agitate and break the yolk. And you just pour this back and forth until you get a homogenized, smooth mixture. It's foaming. Well, in theory, the more you pour back and forth, and you can do it a little slower than that. But the more oh, you pour sorry. back and forth, that's going to that's going to break up all those bubbles. Mm -hmm. And eventually you will get a nice, smooth, somewhat yellow mixture. Oh, it's definitely yellow. Yeah. What we're aiming for is something with a custardy color and texture. Similar, if you are a longtime fan of the Year's Weekend, similar to a glass of avocado. Oh, Avocat, you went in well into everything. You did. You did. We Even go. in blood. I'm going to use this to wipe the egg yolk or the egg white yeah. off my fingers. I hope that's all right. I have no idea. <laughs> it's a very nice uh, bar towel here. How's that looking? Let me take a peek there. What do we got here? A little bit more. A couple, about two, three more One. twists back and forth. And then I want you to put that strainer on top of it there. Three. That looks pretty good. Now put the strainer on top. Uh, strainer. There we go. Pour it into what is apparently my frozen margarita glass here. Hey, man. There's only so many coupe glasses. There's only so many coupe glasses. Oh, look at that. Oh, actually, no. I'm glad we did this because we got the blue. We got some yellow. And this is like just almost at that rim. Yeah. Now, no, this the, last, is good one. the last element is the garnish on this one, which I'm going to garnish with a smidgen of fresh ground nutmeg. And some freshly zested lemon peel. Nutmeg. Nutmeg. I gotta grab that. We're gonna take this here and we are just going to throw some lemon zest Zest that right on top. Our handy juicer has it in the handle. Our handy juicer has a zester in the handle. Because if anything here on the Weird Blues weekend, we are frugal. A little bit more. Okay. A little bit more. There we go. Here. And then some fresh ground. Tell me what. No, this way. <laughs> so like, I'm not seeing any nutmeg come out. Did you remove the cap? No. <laughs> there might be plenty enough nutmeg right there. That's sloppy, but perfect. <laughs> 
and I present to you. I will drink that drink. My creation, the Over Under. We'll see if it's delicious. But I'm gonna guess that this is gonna be amazing. This, Look at this color. It yeah. is yellow. It is like deep yellow, and you know the like egg white or sorry egg yolk. Yes. Um, yeah, I, don't, I actually don't know Madeira, which is one, one well, of the Ma primary. Madeira is a type of sherry. It is a okay. type of drier sherry. Um, I thought with the bitter flavors, a little bit of dryness, mm -hmm. and just accented with the simple syrup slightly. I basically wanted to remove. Any notes of bitterness, but not overcloud okay. the herbaceousness of the Underberg, not knowing what it would taste like. And I think, having not tasted this yet, I think that we are going to succeed here. But let's find out, shall we? Gentlemen. Oh, gentlemen. Prost. Now that is interesting. Oh get, oh my God. Huh. That is interesting. I'm not getting a lot of like uh like the yoki kind of um like body to it, but it is still there. Like there, there's still something there. Yeah, there's a thickness to it. I mean, it's not it's not sitting like a heavy custard on the tongue, but it it does give it a, a yeah. creaminess. The, the the one thing I'll say is that the the Unterberg uh, isn't really kind of coming. Through yeah. As well, here it is. It is a crucial component of the drink, but it yes. is not like being the standout yes. kind of component. And 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 I I suspect what has happened here. It was my goal was countering the bitter aspects of the Underberg while keeping the herbaceousness forward. But I can't tell. Mm. I'm getting a lot of the wine. The Madeira? Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's, I mean, well, it's it's the majority of the volume of this. And I think that's the problem. But, so, so, fans of flips will often tell you that it really kind of acts almost as a meal in and of itself. It's meant to be heavy. It's meant to be enjoyed over a long period of time. It's meant to be sick because it's got food in it. <laughs> So really, I think what I've crafted here is almost a bit of a, uh, almost counterintuitive to the idea of a digestive. This is sort of an after-dinner dessert cocktail. So guys, let's talk about this. Yes. Knowing what one of these tiny bottles tastes like, which cocktail best exemplified the goodness of the Unterberg? Um, Elliot, you first. I really liked them all. Um, so Derek, I liked yours. I, I, I like that, um, with the caveat that I think it would be better served warm, okay. but even cold, it was very nice. It just, I just, it felt like a cocktail that should be served warm. Fair. Um, but really it's almost a three-way tie. I like them all and I'm surprised at that because I did not think that this was a liquor that would lend itself to cocktails well. And I, I really enjoyed Yours, yours, and mine. I think they're all really delightful. Well, technically, uh, this is not liquor. <laughs> no, it's a liquor. It is a bit of... We're eating food here on the Weird Booze Weekend. Mm -hmm. ah, no, it's 44% alcohol okay. by volume. It's stronger than most whiskeys. It's a liquor. <laughs> so we got Elliot with his three-way tie. Dave? Okay. So, um, quick first before I go to, to my pick. Um... You mentioned something about the first drink. Um, you want it warm. Yes, yes. you um, want it tall. I want this one warm. So flips are actually, tra were traditionally yes. warm. And I feel like this would be really good one. Yes. So, but if it's set the egg yolk. I, I don't know. That that works. Works. Okay. All right. I liked that first one. Um, the uh, yeah. the crocus sour was the, quite the nice. Sour was so good. Um, the uh, I, I mean, I like mine, but the espresso is, is espresso martini is great, but it works a little bit better with I think uh, a, a different kind of uh, you know the flavor of bitter kind yes. of mm. in there. And yeah. honestly, I have to go with the crop sour. The crop mm. sour. It was really nice. It's mm. here's the thing. And the reason why we're voting is to see which one exemplifies the bottle's good contents the best. And that there, you didn't lose the Unterberg. Dave's was nice. 
it tasted too much like the coffee. It was overpowering. Mm. Elliot, yours is, I'm not going, I'm going to say okay, because it, the flavor I'm getting very forward is that wine. The Madeira. The Madeira. Not a wine, it's a fortified wine. It's, you used the word wine. <laughs> use the fucking word wine. <laughs> Knowing now what Winkleberg tastes like and having tried this, I think if I were to revise this cocktail, I would do equal parts Madeira and dry vermouth. Okay. I think, I think, um, not necessarily the same vermouth that you use, but a very I, a, a I, nice, I, very dry Italian vermouth. I'd cut down the Madeira and actually use uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, the brandy. But I will say that Dave and I have both finished all of our cocktails. I'm not going to finish this. <laughs> because I need something to cheers with the viewing audience. Oh, I saw well, that. I saw that. Because... Okay, I should. Here we go. There we go. That's it. We're going to drink another room to break. That's it for this episode of Weird Moves Weekend. Remember, if it ain't weird... It ain't weird. worth it! Long may she reign. Long, Long may, may she reign. reign. Whoa! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unterberg, Every meal you replete me Bitter, small, feeling tall these cocktails complete me. <laughs> Next time on Weird Booze Weekend, we drink Bolton's Peanut Butter Chocolate Whiskey.